It's Your Life, television's most talked about program. And now, meet our host, Ralph Edward. Hey, hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good to see you. How are you this evening? Fine, thank you. Nice seeing you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank you, too, for being with us again on This Is Your Life. Well, we're all set to go here. Let's have a look around and see whom we have here at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Lovely lady down here, too. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, that's fine. May I have your name, please? Hannah Corner. What is that? Corner. Hannah Corner. Hannah Corner, good. Oh, you're a, uh, Mrs. Walter Corner, the wife of the Hollywood yes. uh, talent yes. agent. Yes. Is Walter with you? Uh-huh, yes. Where is he? Well, he just went out. He'll be right back. Oh, he will. Okay. I see you're in good hands, though. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, star of the soon-to-be-released 20th Century Fox picture, Sailor of the King, Jeffrey Hunter, right down here. Hello, Ralph. How Hello, are you? Jeffrey. Nice How you How you been, boy? Right. Come on in here. Let's talk. Nice to have you with us, Jeff. And uh, since you're here, how about uh, having you help us find our principal subject, okay? Well, I'll do anything I can. All right. Would you just read for us what it says on the cover of this book, Jeff? This is your life, Hannah Black Conner. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> this is your life, Hannah Black Conner. That is what it says. This has been quite a switch. Uh, you thought it would be the life of your good friend Jeff Hunter here, didn't you? Yes, you thought it'd be the movie star Jeff Hunter. Is that right, Hannah? Yes. No, we'll have to do him sometime, but tonight it's you. Let's get her up, Jeff. Stand up with her. Thank you, Jeff Hunter, for uh, helping us fool this lovely young lady. You betcha. We'll, we'll all be looking for you in Sailor of the King, Jeff. Thank you, Ralph. So, uh... We'll say so long to Jeff Hunter and come on up with me to our Hazel Bishop stage, will you, Mrs. Conner? <sighs> come along here. And don't worry, we haven't kidnapped your uh, husband at all. <laughs> He'll appear, here we go, my dear, right in here. He'll appear at exactly the right moment. You see how that works out? <laughs> come on over here and take your place in our chair of honor, Hannah Block Conner. You re richly deserve this place. Come on over here by me. Lean on me for support if you need to. I hope you have a spare handkerchief. Well, I have a spare handkerchief, and uh, shall I give it to you now? <laughs> oh, well, that's my well, as this is your life, will prove you richly deserve this. May I say, Mrs. Conner, that looking at you, it's hard to believe that during seven short years of a still short life, uh, you lived a lifetime of fear, terror, and tragedy. You look like a young American girl just out of college, not at all like a survivor of Hitler's cruel purge of German Jews. These, as well as happier events in your life, we will relive with you in just a moment. But so intense is your story that our sponsor, Hazel Bishop, wants to devote full time to it without interruption. Hannah, you're really surprised, aren't you? I'm surprised. And I've seen that show so often, you know, I mean, how they fooled me. <laughs> There's one thing, really. This Academy Award of this year's best production, my family should get it. The <laughs> show they put up. <laughs> all the time about Jeff Hunter and us. <laughs> well, it but. took quite a bit of fooling. But now you relax and let's hear the story. We're going back to the beginning, across the seas to Czechoslovakia. This is your life, Hannah Block Koner, in the little town of Teplitz Chernow. Teplitz Chernow, its healing hot springs were known to the Roman world 2,000 years ago. And here in the shadows of the old castle of Count Clary Aldringer, oh. you were born on September 7, 1919. The backdrop of your happy childhood mirrors a romantic past. Your young feet tread the very paths once trod by Beethoven and Goethe. And the winds rustling through the forest echo the majestic strains of Tannhauser, the first act of which Wagner composed in Teplitz. A rich heritage for the two children of Max and Hertha Block. You, Hannah, and your brother, Gottfried. I went to school with Gottfried and Hannah. Remember old sense, Hannah, at the gymnasium? Now, there's a voice out of your childhood talking about old sense and the school you oh, went to. Sure. Do you recognize it? Now, you haven't seen him in over 15 years. Oh, no. He's now a research engineer in Flin Flon, Manitoba, Canada. You remember him as Franzi Lieben. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is beautiful, oh. isn't it? Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, oh. Fine, how's it going? A little thin. 
Oh, Who's old sense, Mr. Lieben? Sense? Oh. He was one of our old teachers, Professor Günther. Yeah. Sense means censor. He was very strict. He used to censor everything. <laughs> and after school and on holidays? Oh, after school and on oh. holidays? Oh, we used to stroll on the Königstrasse. Yeah, I meet our friends on a bummel uh -huh. in front of the theater. Uh -huh. <laughs> Girls and boys of 13 and 14, whether on Main Street or on the bummel in Teplitzscher now, begin right. to cast their first shy glances at each other. Uh, did you and Hannah have uh, dates when you were young, Mr. Lieben? Well, I <laughs> didn't have dates like people here have in the States. We used to go hiking in the mountains, skiing at Sinwald, yeah, dancing true. at the Kreinhütter in Schlossgarten. Yeah. My goodness. Nice, You've been good friends for a long time. We've been good time. friends for a long time. Hannah we met a lot. Uh, did meet one particular boy finally, didn't she, uh, Frank? Yes, she did. It was in 1934, in spring. She was dancing at a school dance, oh, a Czech no. folk dance. And after the dance, her brother Gottfried introduced her to Walter. And after that, she dropped me. Yeah? <laughs> Who's Walter? Walter? Walter Kohner. Oh, Walter Kohner. Your husband now, eh? I wonder where he is, Hannah. I lost him somewhere. He belongs to your life here, doesn't he, Hannah? I should say. Well, maybe he's more important to you later on. Now, what happened after 1934, Mr. Lieben? After 1934? I don't know. I went on to Prague, to the Polytechnic University, to study engineering. Walter, he went to Vienna to study at the theater of Max Reinhardt. What did you do, Hannah? Oh, I did some... I was still in school at that time, and then I went to another school in Marienbad. And then all of a sudden, the war was there. You started, uh, you did some hotel work, too, That's didn't you? That's right, the Marine Bat. You've well, never heard of that place, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I have, having gone through your uh, story. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Frank Lieben, for oh, taking you time out from a very oh, busy life. Take a seat there in Hannah's past, please, if you will. Oh, now, nice see him again oh, after all these years. All this time, you and Walter are together whenever possible? Pretty much so. Though you were both young, your hearts told you that you belonged to each other. By 1938, Walter has made progress in the theater. Although there's turmoil brewing across the border, your future is still bright. On March 11th, 1938, Hitler marches his soldiers across the Austrian frontier, and the Anschluss is accomplished. Still, you proceed with your wedding plans. Then, on October 1st, the Führer's armies pour into the Sudetenland. Your hometown, Teplitz-Schernau, is the first to hear the rumble of the German tanks. The synagogue, where you and Walter worshipped, is the first to feel the flaming torch of the Nazi hatred. Did you actually see Hitler's troops march into your hometown, no, I Anna? Didn't. No, I didn't. Because it must have been very awful. Things look more hopeful when 10 days later Walter gets his visa to go to the United States. Now, he promised to send for you, didn't he? Oh, yes, and he meant it, too. Yes. Where do you go after Walter gets the last plane out of Czechoslovakia? Huh? I went to Amsterdam, first in a little city close to Amsterdam where I had relatives, and I worked there as a servant. Yes. I was a very bad servant. <laughs> Terrible. I didn't know how to cook and to clean or nothing. But you anyway. leave your parents and your brother behind right. to seek refuge for your hopes in Holland. Did Walter in America now keep his promise to send for you? Well, he tried really very hard. He sent me an affidavit, but at that time it was awfully difficult. You couldn't get a quota number, and well, the war came closer and closer. There was closer. three years of waiting, really, That's for your right. quota to come up, wasn't That's it? That's right. At least, probably it would have been even much longer. Three years or more to wait. You go back to work in Amsterdam as a maid, as a sales lady in a bookshop, as a servant in a hotel. <laughs> This is before May 10th. You know <laughs> this is before May 10th, 1940. <laughs> On that fateful day, the Nazis swarm into the Low Countries, putting a merciless end to your dreams. Your last hopes are finally destroyed in the bombing of the American Consulate General in Rotterdam, where the papers that once spelled distant freedom are consumed in flames. Alone, friendless, and hunted as a non Aryan in Hitler's world, you're permitted no means of support. Shut out hopelessly from contact with the outside world, you meet and marry a young German refugee, Carl Benjamin. Through the Red Cross, you manage to get word to Walter, and it's the last word he has from you. For you, the refuge of marriage comes to an end. On a cold winter night in 1943, 
when the Gestapo breaks into your room in Amsterdam. You and your husband are seized and shipped off to the concentration camp at Westerborg near the German border. That's where I first met Hannah. Oh, Eva! We spent about eight months in that camp, and though it was very tough, it didn't compare with the camps that followed. You recognize oh that voice, goodness. Hannah. It belongs to a girl who was your friend and companion in four concentration camps. Now, fate was kind to her, too, for she lives here in Hollywood now. Eva Hertzberg, now Mrs. Warner Florsheim. Oh, <laughs> were you and Hannah moved from that first camp together, Eva? Yes, together with a lot of others. We were uh, packed into cattle cars and shipped off to Theresienstadt in Czechoslovakia. You practically passed through your hometown on That's that trip, right. didn't you, Hannah? You could see it from the yes. grill work of but the... It wasn't no. a nice homecoming. How long were you in this camp, Eva? Oh, only a couple of weeks. Uh, then we were sent off to the extermination camp at Auschwitz in, in Poland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, was it, uh, it was very cold there, and we only oh, had yes. the thin little dresses we wore, yes. and 10 girls had to share two bunks. You were each given a cake of soap and a towel, weren't you, Hannah? I don't remember the soap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were sent to the so-called shower. And even this was a doubtful procedure because some showers had regular water, mm -hmm. others had liquid gas. And you never knew which one you were being okay. sent to. You and Eva were fortunate. Others were not so fortunate, including your father and mother and your husband, Carl Benjamin. They all lost their lives at Auschwitz. You learned that your brother Gottfried was uh, here at Auschwitz too, didn't you, Hannah? Yes, well, that was fantastic. Through the underground, you got a message to him, didn't oh, you? Oh, it was, that was his birthday on, on the 15th of October. My name was called, and uh, there stands a doctor. You know, you don't have names there. There are thousands of people. They just don't know you by name. We didn't even have a number. We weren't even important enough for that. There stands a man, also a uh, prisoner, and he wouldn't believe that it was me, that I was my brother's sister, because mm. I looked really so impossible. <laughs> so anyway, he said that my brother's alive, and he lives in that same camp, only pretty far away. And, and he sent there was the no way. Message. That's right. And but you didn't see him, did you? No, there was no, no way of seeing him. Or Where is your brother now? Well, he lives in Israel now. He's married and is a doctor, yes, yes. Uh, head of the uh, Geha Hospital near Tel Aviv. Oh, you know <laughs> How long were you at the extermination camp, Eva? Until uh, the winter of 1944, when we were shipped off to uh, Camp Mauthausen in Austria. Well, thank you, Eva Hertzberg, Mrs. Warner Florsheim, for being with us. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Hannah. What, uh, what kind of work were you assigned to at uh, Camp Mauthausen? Well, uh, first I got there, I was so sick that they didn't even want me to work. But we all wanted to work, so not to either get gas or at least get a little more food, because the food situation was very bad. And then I worked in a factory that was, um, how do you call it? Well, they made uh, artificial wool. Yes. But it was uh, army factory. And, and I worked at a big machine. You were shoveling coal, too. For oh, a well, oh. You were that, down to 73 that, oh, pounds. That was, that was just, oh, those Ill with a fever of 103 Eva degrees. Was me coal. She shoveled with you. Oh, that was just... You're ready to collapse. And then on May 7th, 1945... V for victory and liberation by Patton's unforgettable Third Army. A day you and the other prisoners at Camp... Mauthausen will never forget, Hannah. The nightmare that lasted seven years is at an end as an American army truck rolls to a stop before the prison gates. Corporal Herbert Kornbleet and Corporal Walter Lohman and I were on detail in enemy-held territory when we came across the camp. Now, there's a voice you haven't heard in eight years, Hannah. Do you recognize it? Don't tell me. Those are the One sergeant. of the three American soldiers who set you free, then Technical Sergeant Harold Schuchart, now of St. Oh, Louis, Missouri. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Oh, we tried to reach you and you never could. Oh, I'm so happy. 
I wouldn't recognize you anymore. <laughs> Hannah gave you a message for someone in America, didn't she, Harold? Yes, I wrote a letter to Walter Conner in Hollywood telling him that Hannah was still alive. Yeah, a letter that didn't reach Walter until much later, oh. but we're getting ahead in our story. You three boys saw to it that the girls were fed and clothed, oh, didn't you, Harold? Yes, uh, really I returned read. to my headquarters, and uh, they came over and took care of them immediately. Later on, I saw Hannah and some of the others at a rest camp. Wonderful. And you probably oh, had I should say. some times, wonderful times together there. Oh, this is just wonderful. This what do you do now, Mr. Shukart? I know uh, that Hannah would be interested. Yes. I'm uh, with the William I. Lippman Company Advertising Specialties in St. Louis. I see. You well, came from St. Louis. He's a lieutenant oh, now, too, really in the reserve. Wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Join Hannah's past there, please, and thank you, Lieutenant oh, Harold yeah, Shukart, for your part in Hannah's life. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. July 1945. You'd regained some of your strength by then, hadn't you, Hannah? So you're sent back to Holland. None of your friends, none of your husband's relatives are alive. One day, alone in an American Red Cross station, you hear of an old girlfriend from Prague. Now, uh, who was that, Hannah? Magda? You heard of... Magda, I should say. I and her husband, Dr. von M. de Boas. They were real friends in need to oh, you, weren't they? they? Their home was a haven for you oh. and for your friend Irene Sachs and for many others. Yes, it was there that I first met Hannah. Oh, no. <laughs> we moved together and we became good friends. I don't Whose believe voice is it, Hannah? Any idea? Irene? Yes, she found refuge with the kindly Van M. de Boas family like you. She came to America. Here she is from New York City, your good friend whom you haven't seen in eight oh, years, no. Irene Sachs. <laughs> I didn't know Irene, oh while you and God. Hannah were living with the Von M. de Boas family in Amsterdam in August of 1945, oh, right. you witnessed perhaps the happiest day of her life, didn't you, Irene? Yes. One day, a young American sergeant came to the door and Stop asked... Sergeant. <laughs> Stop sergeant. <laughs> and asked whether Hannah Block Benjamin was living there. I said, yes, I went to get her. Uh-huh. The sergeant didn't give his name? No, he didn't have to. I knew it could only be one <laughs> man. Did you guess immediately who it was, Hannah? Well, to tell you the truth, first I thought she was kidding, you know, when she said there's a soldier down there. And then she said, no, no. So I asked, does he have dark hair and glasses? She says, yes, but I don't tell you more. So you flew down the stairs, and there stood the sweetheart of your youth in Teplet now, with whom you'd had no contact for seven years, Walter Koner. I told you your husband would appear at just the right moment, Hannah, didn't I? Whoops, do you want to sit down? No, it's There's right. a little, the, the thing jots out down there, and we have trouble with it. Sit down here by your lovely yes. wife, Walter, and Irene Sachs, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Walter, come on over here. We're all anxious to find out how in the world you ever found Hannah. Did uh, Harold Schuchart's letter reach you? Yes, Ralph. I was stationed at Luxembourg at the time. I got a letter which was forwarded to me from Hollywood asked my company commander to get me permission and went to my hometown. Mm -hmm. Hannah wasn't there. I went to Prague. No Hannah. And on my way out to Prague, one day I see a familiar figure to me. It was her brother, who just came back a couple of days before from a concentration camp. I told him that Hannah was alive. He didn't know it. So he told me, maybe she is back in Amsterdam. So I went to Amsterdam, went to various committees, and by chance, one of those committees, the man had to open my letter and said, uh, Hannah Benjamin, she just arrived here last night from a resort camp from Switzerland. Is that so, so? I, so you took up the search in and around Amsterdam, that's right? That's correct, yes. Oh, my. And where did you uh, finally uh, I find got her? the address. I went to Van M. de Boas's house, and there she was. And so the long search was over, Walter. Uh, did, uh, Walter, did you propose to Hannah right away? No, no. I waited until the next day. Yes, well, I very considerate. He was. You were married on October 24th, 1945, in three separate ceremonies. At 11 a.m. by the Luxembourg civil authorities, at 1.30 p.m. by the American consul, and at 3 by a Jewish chaplain, with Walter's whole company of American soldiers kissing the bride. You bet. <laughs> Your dreams come true at last. You sail for America in July of 1946. Well, Hannah, Blach, Koner, this is your life. Safe and happy in the country of your adoption. 
There is but one prayer in your heart today. Now, we know that you and Walter have been saving up your money in the hope that someday you, Hannah, will be able to make the trip to see your brother in Israel. Well, Hannah, Hazel Bishop have, has moved that far-off day into the present. The last time you were in touch with Gottfried was in a Nazi concentration camp nearly 10 years ago. Now, here he is from Israel, your brother, Dr. Gottfried Block. <laughs> This is my happiest day in all my life. I know that, Doctor, and I'm sure it is for Hannah. It's a happy day for all of us. Come on, sit down. How was the airplane trip and everything? Oh, very fine. Just wonderful. Oh, it is still a miracle for me. Three days ago, I have been in Israel. I have no idea. Well, it's a happy day for all of us. Out of the darkness of terror and despair, a new life has been born in a new world for you, Hannah Koner. This is your life. Even as your heart goes out to those less fortunate than you, you rejoice humbly in the bounties America has given you. Well, my, how does brother look to you, Hannah? Oh, he looks just wonderful. All your past gathered around you here, Hannah, were flown to Hollywood as guests of Hazel Bishop by TWA. They fly the finest. They fly TWA, luxurious 300 mile an hour, Transworld Airlines Constellations, the airline that flies three quarters of the way around the world. Experienced TWA pilots, courteous, efficient hostesses all assure our Hazel Bishop guests flying with the finest with TWA. And they all have accommodations at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where right after the show, Hazel Bishop is giving a party in your honor, just for you folks, so that you can get to talk to brother and Eva and Irene, the whole gang, okay. and Francie. Oh, uh, yes, so that you and Walter can relive this memorable night again and again. Hazel Bishop is presenting you with a 16-millimeter sound film of this program, you see, together with a 16-millimeter sound projector from the famous Spiegel catalog, a home shopping book you can count on for everything you need. Now, as a lasting memento of your appearance here, on uh, This Is Your Life. Marshall Jewelers, Fifth Avenue at 56th Street, New York City, have designed for you this lovely 14 carat gold charm bracelet. Now, each charm represents an important event in your life, oh, a memorable uh, moment there. And as a companion piece uh, to the bracelet, there you are, Hannah. Here's a Hazel Bishop a jeweled lipstick for you. I know you'll want that. <laughs> I <should> say, I do. <laughs> they made it all possible. Thank you. The never to be forgotten tragic experiences of your life, Hannah, have been tempered by the happiness you've found here in America, but there are still countless thousands of others like you who are still in desperate need of the barest living essentials, homeless, friendless, alone. They are scattered over all parts of the world. Their sole hope for help lies in the work being done by the United Jewish Appeal. So, in your name, in your honor, Hazel Bishop turns to our viewers of all creeds and races, ladies and gentlemen, with this appeal for financial support. Now, just think of the millions who are in tragic need right now. Orphaned children, the aged, the helpless. And then send your contribution, large and small, to Hannah, United Jewish Appeal, Post Office Box 33, New York 36. Now, Hazel Bishop is happy to start your appeal, Hannah, with a check for $1,000 for the United oh, Jewish Appeal oh, in your name. Oh, <laughs> now, we know the rest of you, ladies and gentlemen, will want to join in. I'm going to give you the address again. Hannah, United Jewish Appeal, Post Office Box 33, New York 36. Now, I know that Hannah will be more than grateful to you, ladies and gentlemen, for your support. This is your life, Hannah Block Koner. To you in your darkest hour, America held out a friendly hand. Your gratitude is reflected in your unwavering devotion and loyalty to the land of your adoption. May you and Walter be ever happy together. It's been a privilege to have you as our honored guest, Hannah, to bring Brother Gottfried here to you. Thank you. May God bless you. Walter, thank you too. Right. You don't have to say anything, really, Walter. Ralph, I, I just want to thank you, Axel Grunberg, Al Pascal, and your staff, and Hazel Bishop for having done the impossible possible and having brought Hannah's brother to this country. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, a different show. 
see this is your life. Good night. Good night. This is Your Life is directed by Axel Gruenberg, produced by Alfred Pascoe and Axel Gruenberg for Ralph Edwards.